Today, I am reviewing Alex Yermolinsky's The Road to Chess Improvement, a great book that we have included in the Dojo Training Program in the rating band of 2,000 to 2,100. That's basically fee day ratings that we're using there. And this is part of this video is part of my quest to either read or reread all of the books that we have throughout our training program. And it's a little bit of a selfish quest of mine. I enjoy reading chess books. I enjoy rereading the classics. And that's what we really have done. We've gotten the chess classics really throughout time in our program. And one of the things right away that will be interesting, that is interesting about this book, is even though it was not written that long ago, what, 22, 23 years ago, um, you can already see the difference in how people approach chess. And I'm going to talk a little bit about that in this video. And, you know, we have classics, you know, going way back. And I think for a lot of modern readers, it's already difficult to, you know, very difficult to start thinking about books by Reddy and Capablanca and Aliak and or Alakai. However, however Costia wants us to say that name, I can't say it. In any case, it's very hard for readers to approach some of those works. And then it's then interesting that already with Yermo's book only being 23 years old or something like that, uh, it's, there's going to be interesting differences to the way we talk about chess today. Okay, so let's get into it. Uh, the book is not a guide in the sense of a prescriptive, this is how you do it, son, kind of thing. It's more a telling of how Yermo did it. And that gives us a view into what chess improvement back then looked like. Um, so let me just try to uh, give a sketch. of, And I know Yermo kind of well, too. So I have a sense both from the book and his own personal story of how he improved, how he got good at chess. And it's very different than I think most people are doing now. In fact, entirely different. So... Uh, one important difference is Yermo did not grow up. On, there was no online. <laughs> there was no online. So there's no like puzzle rush. There's no blitz online. Uh, but he does manage to grow up in Leningrad, right? This amazing seat of now St. Petersburg of chess going on and able to talk in a social way with a variety of people. Um, and that social interaction is in a lot of ways, I think, the basis of him gaining a sense of chess culture. And that social aspect is something we're kind of striving, definitely striving to do with the dojo. And of course, it's a much gl more global thing and unfortunately not as centralized as, say, going to the chess club and meeting your pros there, right? Um, in addition to that, right, we've got a sense of like reading the chess classics and reviewing games both current and ancient. This is what Yermo is doing as a kid, right? And one of the interesting things about Yermo uh, that I know and he brings out in the book is he's never doing puzzles. And it's so interesting because a lot of times people at the dojo are asking me, cry, you don't have any, you don't have us doing enough puzzles. You don't have this doing enough tactics. What are you doing, buddy? And I always say, I say, look, the tactics are in your games. That is where you are going to find the tactics. But no one ever listens to me. No one ever listens to me. And one of the great things about this book is your most showing like the tactics are there. They are in your games and you don't have to go looking anywhere else for them. They're in your games and they're there for you to find on the board and then after for you to try to find them on your own. That's where the tactics are happening. Um, so one of the things about us having this book in the program that's maybe controversial is there's a lot of things that Yermo says that we're kind of saying ourselves. The big one being that in order to improve, you have to go over your games. Okay. The other thing that we have going on in the dojo that's very interesting and big uh, joy for me because I didn't really expect it to happen is because we're asking people to publish their game analyses, the people are doing much better work than, say, my students were doing for me. And it's because they realize they're publishing it to this dojo community. And because they're, the act of publishing creates in their minds the desire to be as clear as possible about what they're saying. And Yermo is also publishing several articles and then culminating in a lot of ways in this book. He's still doing 
to this day, He's still publishing his analyses. And so that act of analyzing and publishing has been, I think, the main driver, I would think, in addition to his social interactions, of um, how he improved. Another thing I want to add is um, something we're trying to encourage with the dojo as well is the ritual of the postmortem. And that's something that he get you can see in the book that people are talking about the game after, right? Just comparing notes and very different from what's going on now. And let me just contrast it to what I'm seeing a lot of now. We have people doing stuff like chessable, memorizing openings. We'll talk a little bit more about how it's different for your mode. Of course, puzzles, puzzle rush, all kinds of puzzles online, yada, yada, yada. You're almost not doing it. And then, of course, computer analysis. And computer analysis is very interesting in that you instantly have a coach. And one of the differences to the old times, and you can see it in your most book, is there was a hierarchy back then. There were players above you, players below you, and you heeded respect to those above you and you scorned those below you. Um, now, even a world champion is in, in a way a chump because the computer, any, any random player can go and see that he's making mistakes. Right? So it's this interesting change in the hierarchy and also change in how we analyze. And one of the things that I'm really enjoying about the people submitting their game analyses to our site is uh, they are doing it largely without the computer or if they're doing the computer only at the very end after they've kind of got their own thoughts in order. And that's allowing them to really see the analysis with human eyes first. It's so important because once, once you turn on the computer, that's really a hard, hard deal to try to see it with human eyes. For example, when I play in tournaments, a lot of times I'll play a game and uh, the guy will come up to me afterwards. We're talking about it in the hallway or something. He's already checked it with the, the computer, man. And so he's not even able then. Once you see it with the computer, not able to see it with human eyes. You're like, oh, I screwed up there or here. But, you know, maybe that move wasn't possible for you to find or maybe you would have found it in your postmortem. Of course, I also want to mention online blitz and lessons didn't exist back in the day. So it's just 23 years ago, an entirely different world of chess. Okay, I want to talk a little bit about some of, this, some of the positions here. Um, I could better get my right position before I get in there. Uh, that was actually our list of books that I flashed for you there. And so one of the things I like and really appreciate about this book is at no point does it present chess as um, a very clear and easy thing, i.e. there's no like basic principles that are going to solve things for you, right? Uh, chess is a messy business that takes work. There's going to be mistakes. And in contrast to a lot of chess books, Yermo shows a lot of his mistakes. And what's interesting is it portrays him then as an incredibly human individual when you contrast that to what books mostly make the author look like, right? In most books, it looks like the author is just some kind of genius. And Yermo is a genius, but if you read the book, you won't necessarily come away thinking he's a genius because he's making mistakes and he's showing you his mistakes. And what's so great is then you get the full picture of what it's going to look like. The disappointments, the mistakes, the messiness of what chess is. So... This is a position which arises when Black does a poor move order in the Grunfeld. And Yermo gives several games from this position. And I thought it's very interesting because uh, nowadays you would just turn on the computer and the computer would say White's doing great and you'd kind of stop. But the fact is, you know, you're in a real game here and you're going to get... If you play this system as white, you're probably going to get this a bunch of times, just as your mode did. And it takes a lot of skill to put people away in this position, right? And so your had it several times in, in these games. He's not showing like perfect games. He's just showing the way it evolved. His understanding of the position evolved. And one of the things I really like it about it that I'm trying to incorporate for myself and then in the chess, chess training program that we have is learning openings is about learning how to play these early middle game positions, having a sense of what's going on. And the way you do it, the way you get that sense 
is by going over your games. So we have several games from this position and others, but I just wanted to show a couple. And then the other set of positions that I really like is ones arising from the um, Sicilian. And well, this is actually him versus Tate. I'm actually going to start reading this book by uh, Emery Tate. Whole different story. But I'll review that soon here. And, you know, Yermo played the Sicilian for years, still does. And it's such a violent opening. And the way he got good at it was going over the games very meticulously. And it's a very interesting process. And Yermo kind of lets you in on that world. And, you know, especially when you're not looking at it with the computer, that doesn't say you can't turn the computer on, but just to see it with human eyes, you're going to see like, oh, there's so many mistakes happening all the time. And it's not about some kind of let's get an objective truth out there or this or that. It's about trying to understand what's happening uh, without being too dogmatic about it. And one thing that I really like about what Yermo does as a player and as, as a teacher in this book is to try to tell you that there's no easy answers, right? There's so many other, whether it's an opening book telling you, this, you know, some kind of easy system or, or, you know, principles. No, it's going to be messy. And when you play against reasonable op opposition, it's going to be especially messy. So I'm going to leave it there. Road to Chess Improvement. Great book. Part of the training program. And I very much enjoyed it. Bye-bye.